Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we're looking at Hobby Boss's new tooled 148 scale Super Hornets. Now we've already reviewed the Echo, which is the single seat one. This is the two seat version. In this case, we've got the F, also known as the Fox Dot, and we've got the G, known as the Growler. Uh, and obviously these are the two seater family. Now there is some subtle differences between both of them, uh, but to the layman looking at it, it can just look like, well, the Growler's got the sort of jammy pods on the wingtips. That's the easiest way to spot them. So obviously see uh, this one here with a growler you've got these pods on the outside so at first glance that's the easiest way to tell the difference between a growler and a foxtrot the thing is the growler doesn't have to carry those pods on the wingtip sometimes they don't so the other way to spot it is is that the fence is on the wings so obviously normal echo super hornets the single seat and the foxtrot version the two-seater version if you like they don't have the fences on the wingtips the other as well as well is the little um, dog tooth or the sawtooth uh, difference between the sort of main wing and the outer part of the wing. It's a straight edge on the Foxtrot and on the Echo models, but actually the Growler has got like a blended effect onto that one. There is some other differences, and I know obviously all the Hornet people out there will be shouting at the screen now the different versions, but to a layman looking at them from a distance, that's the easiest way to tell the difference. Apart from that, from a kit point of view, there isn't many differences between the actual two. So I thought what we do is we put this particular kit off to one side because again, apart from the wings uh, and a few little bits and pieces around onto it, this is the kit with the most differences into it. So I thought this is the way we'd have a look at it. So as we can see, nice bit of box art onto this one. Uh, big old sturdy boxes are ever. These things are quite big as well. If you didn't realize it, the normal sort of Hornet size to a Super Hornet size is around about 30% bigger. I know they look very, very similar, but you know, there is some big differences between it. The biggest one is it's a bigger jet all over. So this thing is actually around about 38 centimeters long. It's got a wingspan around about 27 and a half centimeters. So they are big lumps at the end of the day, as you can see. Running around on here you can see some of these ones so again nice little ones with this we've got a wing fold system down to it we've got a boarding ladder full length intakes and engines which is obviously very nice fully detailed top uh, cockpit tub and some nice nozzles into it also to throw into that as well some beautiful markings from a lot of the growler squadrons that are out there as well so some nice touches down in there running around on your box for the kit number for this one is 85814 and again some of the decals and some of the armaments so again being the growler version it carries the harm even though the foxtrot can carry it as well we've got some a120 am rams and then obviously we've got the uh, alq uh, 99 pods which are these big jammer pods you might remember from the prowler days and things like that uh, and we've got the outer tip ones as well all right so again some nice ones in there other subtle differences obviously for this particular one Again, very nice box art, but it's a live photo, which was a little bit different uh, on there, as you can see. But again, small differences. You can probably just see down in here, obviously it talks about them as well, is obviously you can see there's no fences on the wings and it's got the straight edge uh, on there as well, unlike the other one. Markings for the actual Foxtrot kit, you can see some really nice ones, including obviously the fictional uh, Top Gun Maverick film one that one day we might get to see. Uh, it's down here as well, but we've got the various ones down in here from VFA 103, obviously the Skull and Crossbones one, as you say, we've got the Gladiators there. We've got a favorite of mine, obviously with VFA 2. Uh, uh, which is obviously off of uh, the Abraham Lincoln as well in that gorgeous sort of high vis as well. And again, we've got the black lines over here. Uh, and again, we've got um, the Knights, I do believe, with that one as well. So again, really nice ones down in there. So again, a couple of looking around. Kit number for this one is 58513. And again, weapons fit. Being that this is the more the standard version, if you like, you've got some nice weapons down in here. So we've got the A120s. So we've got the family. So really we've got, uh, you know, as you can see down in here, the B version, and we've got the later D version. We've got the Harm, uh, which is the AGM-88. We've got the Sidewinder. X uh, or the high off ball one. We've got standard Mark 83s, we've got GBU 24s think Top Gun Maverick on that one. We've got JDAMs and we've got JBU 10s uh, as well. And again, down in here, we've got the smaller JBU 12, uh, which is very nice to see. We've got the pods. So we've got the sort of targeting pod down in there as well. Uh, we've got the multiple ejector rack and we've got the triple ejector rack. So and a really nice touch with this particular kit is that we come with a refueling buddy pod as well. So as long as we get some wing tanks in there as well, we should be absolutely fine. Huge load of decals as we can see. And we've actually got the harnesses as well in photo edge. So that is the Foxtrot kit. So opening it up into the growler, 
we can see we are granted by a very nice box so we've got some separate parts down in here so we've got clear parts down in here we've got the underside of the fuselage again very nicely done as well we do get fuel tanks so we've got fuel tanks as well as we've got the jammer pods down in there as well so uh, we've got enough to make uh, definitely four jammer pods very nice indeed we get a little bit of photo etch very nice and then obviously we've got wings and we've got intakes down in there so that's very nice we've got some more parts up here in here so we've got intakes we've got the sort of flap rods the various bits and pieces or the trailing edges ailerons and that i should say we've got i think that's weapons and very neatly packaged away in there as we can see we've got forward fuselage and again what I really like about this one, as you can see down in here, is obviously we've got the electronics base. So if you're doing it, obviously the aircraft's having its walk around, things like that, they would be open. Weapons down in here as well. So as you see, we've got the buddy pod and all those things we were talking about just a minute ago. More weapons down in here. So that's two complete loads of weapons. Again, loads in here. We've got all the gear. So very nice indeed. That's very good. We've got the main fuselage which I'll see the top part of it just like that we've got the cockpit tub so it's obviously the two-seater and then obviously just down in here we've got some of the smaller differences as well uh, down in those ones so we'd be in the growler one as we were saying about this is why we get this little bit of extra so it's just got some little air scoops that are slightly different as you can see this is those uh, sawtooth edges as well which is slightly different from the other one not to mention the slight difference in the Rio uh, and the cockpit areas down in here we've got the decals looking absolutely great and uh, we've got obviously the pull out sheets for all the markings and of course we've got the Oh, more markings we've got the actual instructions so as you can see giant pull out with the old instructions so starting off with obviously doing the seats the cockpit the tub and all the areas down in here keep a note of all the parts because obviously it may be uh, a situation where you've got an overlap between the kits as well between the f and the g all right working our way around down underneath here as well we've got the actual fuselage halves we're opening up the holes as is required obviously if you're going to be having all the pylons you're going to be wanting to do that one as well and then depending if you've got the doors open or close to the boarding ladders obviously that would be slightly different down in there again and then obviously you've got the usual thing the cockpit being in the under half all basic hornet family end up doing that one and then the top part going in there so we've got the huds the various things nice touch with this one we've actually got the radar set down in here so we've actually got that one going in there as well so that's a nice touch to see that in there uh, then obviously down into the cockpit so we've got the framework full detail canopy framework on all of these which is another nice touch and again you can have it with the door open or closed as well for the nose to obviously show off that gorgeous radar for doing it that way the engine as well is a full length engine as we spoke before so there's multiple parts of this coming together and adding detail right the way through then obviously usual way with hornets and super hornets families you've got this sort of fillet down each side which is going to be going in and making up the actual lower part of the fuselage We've got a couple of little pegs going in between as well so that's those put in there and then there it is so full length intakes we spoke about before going into full length engines and then dropping down in there so again you could be opening up panels if you wanted to to open all this one up then we've got the lower half and top halves going in together we've got extra detail making up the formers down into the wheel wells which is a nice touch gear being sorted out and if you wanted to you could actually have the launch bar in the down position as well uh, if you wanted to do it on a little bit of a diorama and things this down in here obviously it's talking about option is one of those ones so we've got this extra air scoop as well for the growler version where it doesn't tend to have it for the foxtrot so again these are little touch differences uh, between the two all right then obviously gear being fitted down there all your actuators and various parts of those being put in and then obviously parts of the doors and then obviously the little bracing and various parts as well for the door actuators being fitted onto this one and then obviously we've got the panels as well so obviously those doors could be fitted on right the way around same again onto the other side and then again so depending if you're having flaps up or down will be depending on how you're having these down so if you're having it folded and all the rest of it so you're having them drooped or you're having them powered up again it's personal choice on that particular one but just taking note if you're using obviously these or those then obviously we've got the panels being fitted right over so we've got the front slats the, the actual uh, plates over the top of the wing system on the rear 
and then outer parts so the outer part obviously depending if you're having it folded or not those being fitted all down into this one and then again we've actually got the jammer pods on the wingtips being fitted onto this one exactly the same for the other side so again depending if you're having it folded or down you've got the sort of l-shaped brackets or the normal ones being fitted in there. I do wonder if there's a way of making it so you could have it as you know one or the other if you wanted to put that one in. Pylons being fitted, don't forget, they look funny. They are off angle. I can't remember what the degrees are now, but they do all point outwards. So don't worry if it doesn't look like they're all pointing in the right direction. All the actual pylons face outwards, so they tow out. So they look a little bit weird, but it is supposed to be like that, don't panic at all. And then down into here, we've obviously got the slight difference as well with the growler. We've got the extra bump down here at the back. Those wing fences we were talking about, which you wouldn't have the normal one. So those being fitted down into here. Down the back as well, another nice touch. You can have the actual burner cans at the back, closed or open as well, depending on what how you want it to be, either powered down in flight or something in between. Down at the back end here, we've actually got the tailplanes being fitted onto this one. And obviously you've got the uh, rudders. So again, if the rudders are in the folded down position and everything in, they tow inwards. A bit like if it's on the cat as well, ready for takeoff, they tow inwards to sort of pull the back down. All right, so again, depending on how you're having those, we've got some lights being fitted down at the back. The ladder, again, a little bit fiddly putting all the steps in, but you've got individual steps into those ones and the ladder being fitted on there just like that. And that gives you your completed format. So then again, uh, basically you've got the uh, uh, wing tanks on there, which is quite nice. I think you get the four, so that's great. We've got the harm missiles being fitted onto this one. We've got the ALQ 99s, and then obviously you've got the AIM-120s. We've got the uh, launchers for the racks as well being fitted those down there depending on which one you want and again we've got multiple weapons uh, for if you're doing F as well so if you wanted three four bombs it'll roughly be the same but looking at on the head-on you can see some of the differences so again you can see how the actual pylons tow outwards so uh, remembering that one the fence is down in there as well all right so again another nice touch with that particular one then we have some of the call outs for them so obviously we've got all your stencil data and that's basically it. Colouring is pretty straightforward. It's light and dark and goes grey on these ones. So again, same for all the different versions, depending on which ones you want to do. So some really nice ones down in there. So the Zappers as well with the Dragon, absolutely beautiful one. And the Shadow Hawks as well is always a nice one with the black or good old fashioned Scorpions as well with the high vis tail. Really nice details down in there. And then again, obviously you've got your color call out and your stencil data, but everything being fitted down on there. So if we just grab that knife. We've got all the details down in here. So we've got, we can get in. As you can see, beautiful markings as always. So we've got the scorpions ones down in there, always really nice, good, solid color. And then obviously it's quite nice as well. We've got the panels already pre-done as decals, so that's over a bit of painting. Uh, and all the different things down in there as well. So that's very nice to see. And then again, we've got some of the other ones. And then we've got high vis and low vis markings as well, as you can see, looking very nice with all of those ones. So actually that's not looking too bad at all, any of those. Right, okay, so. Where should we start? That starts on the top. Ooh. New blade. Okay. Okay. So, I start off with, as you can see, we've got the top. And again, really nice with Hobby Boss. They sort of do this thing where, you know, it seems to be really a nice mixture of the actual very fine panel lining and it's really nice and sharp and crisp. You can probably see it down in there, as well as obviously even though in this stage of uh, with um, sorry the um, carbon fibers and you know composite materials and things like that you still get riveting so as you can see really nice detail I think these are the ECS part, uh, pipes at the back really very nicely done a lot of the manufacturers have them as a separate but they're molded in and they're right the way in as well so very nice details down the back end that's really very, very good indeed. 
So that's very nice to see. Uh, right, okay, where do we begin? <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at the front end. So a lot of these parts we've seen before because obviously we saw them on the, uh, the Echo review. So if you want to go off and have a, another look at that one, but you do get a really nice view of them uh, down in here as well. So you can see some really nice stuff. So we just have a quick walk around. And again, that nice detail paneling. We've got the breakers all down in here as well for the ground crews to go around and make sure they're all flush before they get going. The various things. We've got the tails. Looking very, very nice. Good job on those. And again, these pylons on here and things like that, again, they're interchangeable between aircraft as well. We've got those intake sides of the fillets, as I call them, down the side. Looking very nice indeed. And again, on the blind side, good, clean, crisp. No problem with any of that. That's fine. All the ejector pins are nicely flat. So again, if we jump straight down in here, because this is obviously for the growler. So we were saying about this is those little intakes which are slightly on the side down the back end here. This is the actual tailpipe down here. This is the end of the wing. You should say this little area down in here. As you can see some of those little differences. Slight difference as well in the instrument panel uh, down in there. The fences, we were talking about the various bits on this one. So there is some just subtle differences. Again, the nose wheel door half as well, slightly different. The instrument panel rear combing, slightly different as well. And then this lump at the back here for a little bit more electronics warfare type stuff down in there. And again, this is the wingtips. You got Normally this is, would be just literally a tooth sticking up and this one's blended in slightly as well. So this is the difference between the growler and then obviously we said before about the actual uh, Foxtrot version. So again, really very, very nice details down in there. Okay, let's just, I'll grab it as we go and we can see. So we've got the standard type cockpit, but again, you're not gonna be using this instrument panel because we've got a different one for it. So again, you can see some of the details down in there for the cockpit. And again, some nice touches as well, like these bars across here, we've got all the little latches and the locks as well. Uh, and as well as probably the environmental stuff for defogging and various things in there. We've got the canopy bow over here. And generally pretty nice, no problem at all. It's not quite like a legacy Hornet where it's covered in switches and all the rest of it. It is sort of touchscreen panels these days and all things like that. Not quite a block three, but we're getting close. So again, that's that little guy just there. Okay, so down in the sort of main uh, sprues of it down in here. So again, you've got lots of different stuff going on. So down in here as well, you can see this is that radar for the ESA radar system. All the various parts and panels going across the top. So this is your nose wheel, top wall here main gear doors you can see really nice no ejector pins in there no nothing you have to worry about which is very nice and then down on here we've got the rear stab and the actual sides of the intakes looking very nice indeed one piece tailplanes that's all looking very nice so no problem with any of that and obviously we're under here we've got the noose looking good okay so full length intakes like we said. So as you can see, really very nice detail. And again, you're gonna be opening them up, but it's nice that the, the holes are closed up on the bottom, but down in here, as you can see, that's your lower wings, the various parts down in here for the gear and undercarriage. We've got the main doors, that's the flaps at the back. That's that sort of forward lyrics or the leading edge extension system. That's where your ladder would fold up and go. And again, under here, really nice. We've got no ejector pins in these intakes. So nothing to worry about on both sides of that, which is a very nice touch indeed. So that's looking very nice. Again, so down in here into the more nitty gritty parts of it, we've got the, let's say, all the gear all the small little actuators and the various parts down to it. And then over here, as you say, this is the wing fold system in the actual folded, so it's L bracketed if you like. And then down in here, you can actually see these are all the uh, sort of gear, well, you can see flaps up, flaps down. 
depending on which way you're having it around. Same right the way around most of this stuff, as you can see. So again, this is all the formers for the insides of the wheel wells. So again, nice detail. This is your wings obviously folded down. So obviously these are just flat, so the bell shape. Main gear, big old huge beefy gear, as you know, down into these ones. Again, it's full weight on wheels. You can't really do much about it uh, the way it actually goes. And again, we've got all the uh, actuators down in here for the main flaps and things. It's your tail hook. Very nice indeed, and all the smaller parts running down the bottom. Very, very nice indeed. No real flash. In fact, I can't see any flash. Very small, very nice. Again, Hobby Boss these days is like night and day. Okay, weapons we're not going to go through because we did it, to be honest, with the Echo. But we do get, as I said before, we've got the Buddy Pod in with this particular one. But you do get a full accompaniment of all the weapons, even though... The Growler, I'm not sure if it is capable of certain weapons, but I think it can probably do pretty much everything. But again, it's always a welcome thing to get these because let's face it, it's gonna go in your spares box and you're gonna have them forever more. Just down in here, we've got the lower fuselage half. And as you can see, very, very nicely detailed. And again, we've got a lot more detail to go in down in here as well, but you've got all the internal parts of it as well with all of those so that's pretty darn good all the way in there and it's good strength plates you've got the engines are going to mount into these so that's all going to be pretty nicely done so very nice indeed another part we got just down here is that little bit of photo etch so you've got some harnesses down in there uh, so that's actually pretty nicely done and again fuel tanks so you have got four fuel tanks as well so if you did want to do it as a buddy refueler with the F you can do it, so that's pretty good. And then obviously we've got the jam pots, of which we've got four, which I think they only fly with two, but as I say, not 100% with that one, but you've got the little props on the front and the various things. And again, you've got decals for these panels, which is very handy indeed. Over on here, we've got the another bag. And so we're a little bit all over it with this review, going back and forth, but hopefully you get the gist of it. Beautifully packaged, so match pair, with these two and again as you can see down in here we've got detailed work for the engines and with the pylons one piece nozzles all done for you so that's actually pretty nicely done and then again we've got these engine areas which again they're probably gonna need a little bit of lightening up with some wiring and things got the flame holder for the afterburner injectors things like that there's your seat, it's a one piece seat ready to go in, maybe a little bit plain on there. Then we've got all the various parts which make up the engine detail and stuff like that. And obviously we've got match pair for these, so that gives you pylons, engines and details and various things down in there as well. Last up we've got the clear parts. So down in here, hopefully this might just pull off, yep we do. Front glass work. Looking very, very clean. No marks or anything I can see down in there, which is a nice touch. Full one. We haven't got, oh we do, but it's so thin, you probably could get away with not even touching that. I'll tell you what, that's very, very difficult to see, but it has got a very, very fine center seam but it is so finely done i think right there's a bit of distortion down in there it's a bit wobbly but it is a curve so normally you do the thing of turn it over and see how bad it looks on the inside because that's the side they'd be seeing they don't care what this side looks like but again that center seam is absolutely minute it could be worth not even touching it because you just have to catch it in the light to be able to see it it's that fine i'm trying to show it there we go just catching it there just above that light bead but that is really difficult to catch in the light to sew it. But it has got a sense of seam, but yeah. There you have it. That is absolutely beautiful. So what we've actually done here is really have a look around the growler kit. The difference is obviously being, is obviously on the Foxtrot, you're not going to get the bits, the fillets and the end pods and all the rest of it on the Foxtrot because you're going to get different weapons. But it looks like you get all the weapons. So looking at it, 
I'm thinking what they've actually done is just chuck in the growler bits and the different panels and that, but left all the others in there as well. So interesting way of doing it. it explains why that one is, I think it's about five pound more expensive, but you can probably see it's got this little bulge just down here at the back where obviously this one doesn't actually have it. It's flat. So there's a couple of little differences. They both got the pizza box at the front and all the other areas. So that's why there's a lot of commonality between both kits. But if you have a look at the Echo kit and now you look at the growler, you can see exactly what you're going to get with the Foxtrot as well. But again, they are really very, very nice. And again, it's up against stuff now because Meng's brought one out. You've got the very old one, which to be honest is showing its age a little bit now, purely because they've been modernized in so many different ways with the Hasegawa kits, but they are beautiful. So now we're being spoiled with a plethora of Super Hornets coming out and things like that. And that's definitely welcome for me because you do know I'm a bit of a bug fan at the end of the day. So anyway, that's Hobby Bosses, two-seater F18F and G, Super Hornet and Growler kit reviews.